Hi, everyone. My name is Luke Wilson. Uh, a very big congratulations to you all that are watching here. If you're watching us, it means you were admitted to the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. And today, this is our specific major spotlight on our pharm uh, pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacology toxicology majors here. Um, so uh, first and foremost, I also want to extend a very big thank you to all of our current students and alumni and current faculty and staff that are out there working on the front lines amidst all the craziness that's going on in the world. Um, a lot of gratitude for you guys out there on the front lines right now. Really, really appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Luke Wilson. I work within our admissions office here. Uh, some of you folks have seen my face. A lot of you guys have gotten phone calls from me and emails. So this is me in the flesh if it's only been phone calls and emails. Um, but you really don't want to hear from me. Uh, I want to introduce our faculty and our student here to discuss the programs. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Stephen Kerr, who's going to introduce himself, then pass it to our student, Chris Hurt. So uh, Dr. Kerr, feel free, take it away. Sure, thank you, Chris. Um, um, so uh, my name is Dr. Kerr, uh, Stephen Kerr. I'm the interim dean at the School of Pharmacy, uh, MCPHS uh, Boston. I've been here for about 25 years. This is my 25th year, and I started as an assistant professor of medicinal chemistry, uh, and now I'm professor of medicinal chemistry, and I've also been through all the various administrative roles of uh, chair of the department, uh, program director of pharmaceutical sciences, uh, and now I'm the interim dean for the entire School of Pharmacy. Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful, thank you so much. And Chris, feel free to introduce yourself too here. Hello everyone, uh, congratulations to being um, accepted at MCPHS, you guys are gonna love it here. Uh, my name is Chris Hurt and I'm a, a fourth year um, student in the pharmaceutical sciences program. Wonderful. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kick it off with questions. Um, Dr. Kerr, I'm going to come to you first. Would you please describe um, some of the strengths of the pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacology toxico toxicology program? It's a mouthful. Um, and, and really why those programs are, are sort of the best choice for students who are looking into those fields for their careers? Sure, sure. Uh, so basically, MCPHS uh, School of Pharmacy Boston uh, what we offer is uh, the whole range of, let's say, courses in the pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacology and toxicology, uh, but also courses in the pharma industry, for example, the regulatory and health policy, uh, the clinical research, the pharmacoeconomics. And so what students actually get is an opportunity to delve into almost any facet of the pharmaceutical industry at an MCPHS. So while they come in as undergraduate students, whether it's in the Bachelor of Science program in Pharm Sciences or the Bachelor of Science program in the Pharmacology and Toxicology, they get opportunities to actually uh, look into matters even more deeper into a particular interest. So if they wanted to do a course in let's say pharmacoeconomics or in the regulatory and health policy, such as FDA, uh, they have those opportunities. And so by the time they graduate uh, with the bachelors, uh, you know, they are ready to basically set foot anywhere in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, whether it be in quality control analysis, uh, whether it goes into biotechnology or animal handling, handling and care, or basically even in the regulatory uh, field or even as clinical research associates, they would have that opportunity. So I think MCPHS uh, School of Pharmacy Boston, I think is probably one of the only schools uh, in the nation, I would say, that offers such a repertoire of uh, different programs where students can either get a basic foundation in or even uh, get a much more enhanced uh, education in some area of the pharma industry. And I think that's our biggest strength that we offer to our students. Thank you for going into such depth on that. And I, I really think it's very important to make sure students and families alike understand just the wealth of different opportunity and careers are out there. I think too often people get very linear in their thought process and say, I do this course and I go directly into you know, being a researcher and that's it. When the truth is you have a lot of opportunity out there. So uh, thank you for that really thorough explanation. Um, I'm gonna come over to you now, Chris. Would you mind, uh, this is an easy question to ask, much harder to answer. Um, would you mind explaining why you chose MCPHS? 
Um, so actually, my my answer is pretty simple. Um, so before coming here, I was working as a pharmacy technician at CVS, and I worked with many of my uh, coworkers. Actually, came to MCPHS, and I was looking at a school where I um, wanted to do something that involved pharmacy. So it was kind of the natural choice for me. Um, in addition to that, I knew it was going to be commuting, and in terms of commuting, it doesn't get any easier than just hopping right off the green line and your school's being right there. So it just seemed like the obvious choice for me. I had a great uh, reputation and easy to get to. Wonderful, awesome. I'm, I'm glad it was an, an easier answer than, uh, than what I thought it would be. I always had trouble when I was you know, a student going to school. I was like, oh, why, why am I choosing this? So I was in your seat long ago. So <laughs> thanks for that. Um, I'm gonna come back over to you now, Dr. Kerr. Um, would you mind uh, just sharing with some of what you enjoy most about teaching here at MCPHS and obviously the, the yeah. time and all the work that you've done here speaks for itself, but would you mind elaborating? Sure, so uh, to give you a little bit more of my background, I've basically been a perpetual student, let's put it that way. Uh, I never really left school, uh, right from kindergarten to junior high to high school, to my bachelor's, uh, my graduate level work, my PhD, I then did a postdoctoral fellowship, and then I came as an assistant professor. So I pretty much not left school. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, education and academics is right in my blood. My, my parents were both uh, high school teachers. So, you know, that's there. But it's all about the students, right? It's, it's all about watching students come in uh, as freshmen, pretty much, uh, let's say, a little bit unsure of where they want to go, what they want to do. Uh, but then to see them blossom as they start taking different courses, especially when they get into their third and fourth year, you know, where they find a niche that, yeah, this really piques my interest. I need to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, you know, they get to work uh, on a directed study project with a professor or um, undergraduate uh, research with a professor. Uh, they get to, you know, work with, let's say, a faculty mentor and, you know, that sort of encourages them that, yeah, they've got someone over there. Uh, and for a faculty member, it's just so rewarding to see students blossom to what they can ultimately be. So I think that's the biggest reward we get as faculty members. It's just working with the students uh, and watching them develop. And of course, uh, you know, once they leave us uh, and they're successful, I mean, that's all we look for. So it's basically working with the students uh, and looking for their success. I think uh, that's that's what brings out, I think most of us who come to academia, uh, that's what brings us to academia. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, Chris, I'm gonna come back to you here. Would you mind sharing some examples of things you've done in the class that have helped prepare you for your future career within the healthcare field? Okay, so um, my plans for after graduation, I've uh, applied to the PharmD program in Worcester. So that's uh, what I've been planning on doing. And um, in terms of things in the classroom, I wasn't really involved in any directed studies, but I did. Um, I do have a part-time job at CVS. So that uh, really does help me uh, prepare for like the, the patient care aspect that's separate than learning about what all the drugs do. But that has certainly been very helpful, especially like the regulatory and FDA classes, learning about um, like what goes into the drug making proce process and how those things are regulated. That helps me like explain certain things to patients. So I've definitely been able to use um, a lot of what I've learned in the classroom um, in my job right now. So that's definitely helped. Wonderful. Thanks for taking the time to also connect it to what you're already doing every day, you know, working as a uh, farm tech. So um, that's really encouraging to hear. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to come back over to you now, Dr. Kerr. Um, I'm going to go ask you to dive a little bit more into your knowledge of your faculty here. Um, would you mind sharing some some accolades and, and appointments and other successes that uh, your faculty have had? Sure. So we have a diverse range of faculty, right, from the traditional pharmaceutical sciences, uh, which is, you know, uh, medicinal chemists or pharmacologists or pharmaceutical scientists, if you like. Uh, and then also in our, uh, what we call our drug regulatory and health policy, uh, we have lawyers, we have pharmacoeconomic uh, experts, uh, we also have uh, medical statisticians. Uh, and so uh, all of them uh, are very heavily involved in research because we also have a graduate program. We have a master's program as well as a PhD program. Uh, they all uh, do independent research. Uh, their graduate students publish. They publish 
established. Uh, they are on many different types of committees, whether they are on journal advisory boards or they are on scientific organizations. Uh, they were also on NIH, the National Institutes of Health Review Committees, where they actually review grants as well. So uh, pretty much on top of cutting edge knowledge, if you like, uh, in, in their particular uh, expertise or in their particular field. Um, I would also mention that many are very heavily involved with student organizations. Uh, for example, I'm a, I'm a faculty mentor for three student organizations at the college, and a lot of my other faculty also uh, mentor student organizations. Uh, Many have received awards. Uh, many have been uh, highlighted, if you like, have been called in for conferences as keynote speakers in, uh, in their particular field. Uh, we have faculty working on gene therapy and nanotechnology, uh, talking about today's world with COVID-19. Uh, many of you might know that uh, one of the vaccines that is being delivered is actually through nanotechnology. It is making these nanolipid particles and we have two of our faculty actually whose work is in nanolipid particles. So it's right there on the cutting edge uh, and they are actively involved in research and their students as well. Uh, so I think uh, it's any student coming over here will get a really good experience as far as doing both foundational work in the sciences, but then also cutting edge work in actual research. And undergrad students can take what we call directed study projects, where they can work one on one uh, with a faculty member and get that enhanced knowledge. Uh, I should also mention we also have what we call the Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program, uh, where again students have an opportunity to work with faculty members and get a lot more involved in doing hands on uh, bench and independent research. Uh, but our faculty members are very well respected in their field. Like, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, they, you know, they write journal articles, they are on journal advisory committees, they are on uh, grant review committees, and they are also invited to give keynote presentations of their work. So, yes. That is a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kerr. Uh, very active faculty. It's good to hear. Um, Chris, I'm going to come back to you here. And you already touched on this a little bit with what you do for, for your job outside of the classroom. Um, but would you mind sharing any other activities you do outside of the classroom, whether it be clubs and organizations or, or anything like that uh, that are involved with the school here? Um, I mean, in terms of like, I'm not really involved in terms of any uh, like clubs or organizations, but we, at least when I was on campus, like I had like a couple study groups and like that definitely helped. Like we'd meet like a couple times a week and just go over like the notes. Um, honestly, that's what I miss most about uh, in class. Um, like actually being on campus is being able to like meet with my fellow peers and go over the notes. Cause it really, you learn so much from just bouncing ideas off of somebody else's perspective that it's, um, like one of the best study tools I think you can have. Wonderful. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I, I think, you know, one of the one of the big draws that I tell students to make sure you're looking for in a college is not just, you know, the accolades and the reputation that you know about, but it's the student body. Um, I think that's really important and really tough to figure out. Um, just another question for you actually to, to sort of follow up. I know clinicals are going to be a component of the PharmD program down the road. Um, is there anything that you've spoken with faculty already about that sort of have given you some insight on that or, or any planning around that? Um, so not necessarily the faculty, but some of my coworkers, I've asked them a lot about clinical. clinical. So um, as I said, the only experience I have right now is in retail, but I'm definitely interested a lot in either like the, the regulatory aspect of what a pharmacist can do. Like um, the FDA works with pharmacists a lot in phase three trials. Um, so that's very interesting to me. And also um, like a hospital setting of being a pharmacist where you're more working um, like individually managing patients' medications than necessarily on the grand scale. So there is a lot that I'm looking forward to um, that I have talked a lot with my coworkers about. So there's definitely a lot I'm looking forward to down the road. 
Uh, Luke, sorry, uh, Luke, ahead. can I can I jump in? Uh, you know, you were asking Chris about uh, the student organizations and activities, and I should mention that you know MCPHS has probably close to eighty different student organizations. Uh, many of them are professional student organizations, and I should mention uh, that I'm actually the faculty advisor for something called the ISPE, International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineers. Uh, and especially for those students who want to do uh, pharmaceutical sciences or pharmacology and toxicology, uh, you know, that is one student organization uh, where there's tremendous amount of opportunity. Uh, ISP, for example, has an open house at Gillette Stadium every year where different um, uh, employers come in and actually interview with uh, students about to graduate and you know give them an idea as to what the industry is. Uh, it's open to pharmaceutical scientists, to chemical engineers, uh, but also biostatisticians and things like that. Uh, but besides that, we also have the American Chemical Society, which is actually out of uh, School of Art and Sciences. They have an organization. Uh, we have the American Association of Pharmaceutical Sciences, which is another student-run organization affiliated uh, to the national uh, organization as well. And so I, I think there's a lot of opportunities for students to get immersed, if you like, uh, not only into the education, uh, but into the extracurricular area, you know, where joining these professional, uh, professional organizations basically enhances the networking skills, and you never know down the road, you know, someone you've met at one of these uh, conferences, uh, you know, might be willing to put in a good word for you or, or even offer you a position. Uh, so, you know, not to take away anything from what the school has in terms of offering students opportunities to get involved from a uh, extracurricular point of view. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Dr. Kerr, I actually have a follow up question for you that kind of falls into that same vein. Um, with regard to not just opportunities, but are there any other specific tracks that students that are looking to pursue pharm uh, pharmaceutical sciences or pharmacology, toxicology that they might want to consider? Sure. So uh, I should mention that uh, the farm science program, I, I would say, is probably a really broad based uh, program as far as giving students uh, a foundation in sciences. Uh, in the regulatory affairs, in some of the quality control or quality analysis. Um, and, uh, and so with that foundation, it actually offers student an opportunity to pretty much practice in any field of the pharma industry. And so, you know, one, one track or a couple of tracks that students can definitely pursue is that, uh, and Chris, uh, I mean, at, uh, Luke, you might have mentioned this to the students as well, that we have the Advantage program that the, that the college runs, uh, where you can get a master's uh, degree at, let's say, uh, discounted uh, tuition, uh, you know, uh, and so, you know, you do your bachelor's in farm sciences, and then you get a master's in regulatory and health policy or a master's in pharmacoeconomics. Or you can go into the traditional farm sciences and get a master's in uh, pharmaceutics or in medicinal chemistry or pharmacology, or even in, uh, you know, going further to get your doctorate. So I think we offer a lot of that. Uh, we also have a school of um, management. And so if you're so interested, you can get a master's in healthcare management as well. So. Again, I think the farm science degree, whether it's in farm sciences or it's in pharmacology and toxicology, I think it's, it's such a broad based program that a student can find a niche or find uh, something that they would like to just then go on and excel in. Uh, and I can give you my own history, if you like. Uh, I was a chemistry major growing up, I mean, well, many, many years ago. Uh, and it so happened in my, in my junior year, I had an opportunity to take a course on drugs, meaning medicinal drugs, uh, not, you know, maybe not some of the recreational drugs, but the medicinal drugs. Uh, and I was so fascinated in that course uh, that I decided to just dedicate my entire life then to pharmaceuticals. And so I went on and did a graduate program in pharmaceutical chemistry, my PhD in medicinal chemistry. I did a postdoc in biochemical pharmacology. And then, you know, I've been a faculty member teaching in the farm sciences for the last 25 years. So, um, you know, and I don't regret uh, anything that I've done 
uh, with that. But I think, again, it was that chemistry program giving me an opportunity to learn something about drugs, which just piqued my interest and, you know, set me on my path. Uh, and I think that this is an opportunity for any student coming into a farm science program or the pharmacology and toxicology is that they will find something that will pique their interest and they can, you know, pursue that. I mean, in the case of Chris, he's found a uh, Maybe he wants to be a pharmacist. And so, you know, he's going more on the clinical side. So yes, he's got some of the science and feels maybe for him, clinical might be a better fit. And he's pursuing, you know, the clinical aspects of the pharmaceutical sciences. And, and that's what this uh, program actually allows students uh, to, to go on to do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you went back and you sort of reestablished that, you know, it, it is something that's flexible and you have a lot of different pathways and you have the for lack of a better term, you have the bandwidth to find yourself in there. So it's not something where it's strictly rigid and it's this way and only this way. So thank you again for all that. Right. And to just add to that, I mean, we do have what we call program electives that students can take and they can choose pretty much anything in that program elective. Yes, we have a lot of farm science program electives, uh, but if they want to do something in management or finance or so entrepreneurship, I mean, we allow them to do that. Uh, you know, if they wanted to do something in clinical research, uh, even if it's a master's course, if they petition, you know, we look at the petition and yeah, okay, do, do a clinical research course at the graduate level. So there's a lot of flexibility uh, in, the, in this program. Uh, it's just a matter of talking to your program director and, you know, trying to uh, advocate as to what, you're like, what you want to do. And, you know, we will, of course, try and do as much as we can or everything that we can uh, to help you get to where you want to get. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Chris, I want to come back to you here. And uh, I, I, I know folks want to get on here. So these are going to be the last couple of questions for you guys. Um, Chris, for the students that are watching right now, um, do you have any, you know, key pieces of advice that you want to put out to them? Yeah, I'd say probably my best piece of advice I can give to incoming students is to try and have some sort of semblance of a schedule. I mean, um, going to college is very different than high school. It's a lot less structured. So getting yourself into a schedule where you, you know, wake up in the morning, do some homework, do your readings, go to class, go to the gym, eat lunch, just having that um, way to keep track of your own time is going to be very helpful. Um, because if you don't, like your assignments will catch up on you and trying to just do them a little bit at a time, at least for me, has been very effective because once you start getting into these higher level courses, like the, the workload gets to be pretty high. So you do have to break things up like over the course of a whole week and through the weekend to make things manageable. So that'd be probably my best piece of advice I can give. All right. Wonderful. Time management, extremely important. Uh, it also continues on with your regular life afterwards. So certainly a good thing that you're starting to build it now. Um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Chikar, I'm going to come back to you for the last question of the day here. Um, would you mind providing some examples of our student outcomes recently uh, with our graduates from the programs? Sure. So, uh, well, one of the outcomes, of course, is looking at what are the you know, employment opportunities and where do our students go? And I can say, you know, we've actually placed students, not placed, but students have found positions in almost all of the big pharma industries. You, you know, it could be uh, Vertex, it could be Pfizer, it could be Biogen, uh, Sanofi, Genzyme. Uh, you know, we've placed our students there. Uh, uh, we've also got students in something like um, Nestles, uh, you know, the, the people that make uh, water, if you like, uh, in the quality control. Uh, but I think some of the other outcomes we look at is, uh, especially with students doing undergraduate directed study or undergraduate research, is uh, what is the output coming from there? And uh, many of them work with professors and they get uh, either a review paper, you know, so they get their name on a journal article, or they actually have independent research uh, on a journal article. Uh, and, you know, that's, uh, that's some of the product with something that they can showcase that this is, yeah, this is my work. This is what I did. Uh, and, you know, that becomes a great testament uh, on their CV or their resume, especially when they're applying for different positions. Uh, we've had our students also go on to graduate study. So they've gone on to do their master's or even the PhD uh, at other places. And so, you know, we look at all of that as part of outcomes. Uh, some of our students, uh, like Chris, uh, go on to get a PharmD degree. So either 
they've gone to Worcester or they've come back to the Boston PharmD program or they've you know, gone to some other PharmD program as well. Uh, but again, I think uh, as far as outcomes, uh, it's, a, it's a program that gives you a solid foundation. Uh, so there should be really no excuse uh, for someone you know, to get uh, wherever they want to go. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all that information. Um, so that really does it for today, you guys. Um, I want to, again, thank Dr. Kerr and thank Chris for, for joining us and providing some insight for our admitted students and their families that are watching today. Um, again, a very big thank you to all of our, our current students, our alums, our you know current faculty and staff that are out there working in the field and, and keeping us safe right now. Um, and you know uh, again, thank you for your time. And again, a big congratulations on your acceptance. Um, without anything else here, I'll let you guys continue on with your day. And uh, again, big congrats and take care. Bye-bye now. Yeah, and uh, thank you oh. again. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And I look forward to seeing all of you on campus. So what can I say? Wonderful.